The US and NATO are in the midst of the state of relations known as the Cold War with the Soviet Union and its Eastern Bloc. An American U-2 spy plane and its pilot Gary Francis Powers are shot down deep in Russian territory. The chronicle of the infamous U-2 incident reveals one of the most compelling stories of the Cold War. With the US and Russia and every country in between anxious of the threat of nuclear war and mutually assured destruction, the need for technological advances was amplifying at an accelerated rate. The United States felt threatened by rapid Soviet advances and technological achievements and needed immediate intelligence about Soviet capabilities and intentions. With the advent of photographic spy satellites still five or six years away, President Eisenhower decided upon a high-altitude reconnaissance plane to resolve these national security issues. Born out of this desperation was the U-2 spy plane. Nicknamed the Dragon Lady, the spy plane was the culmination of billions of dollars invested in the development of long-range planes, overseen by the Central Intelligence Agency. The plane was capable of flying at almost undetectable altitudes of 70,000 feet. And the CIA boasted that it had the ability to take high-resolution pictures of headlines in Russian newspapers as it flew overhead. is that there seemed to be an explosion. I don't know what caused it, but I feel that it uh, was not in the aircraft itself. Despite CIA assurances to President Eisenhower that the Soviets did not possess weapons sophisticated enough to shoot down high-altitude planes, a classified U-2 reconnaissance flight piloted by Francis Gary Powers vanished over Russian territory. His fate and the fate of the U-2 program remained an enigma for several days. Powers would later recall that he was unable to hit the self-destruct button built into the plane before bailing out on a parachute, leaving the plane partially intact upon crashing. The United States' top spy pilot landed in a field just outside the Ural Mountains, where he was captured by Russian civilians. He was later taken into the custody of the Soviet government. Four days after Powers was shot down, the Russian government confirmed the Eisenhower administration's worst fears. On May 5, Nikita Khrushchev delivered a speech stating that an American U-2 aircraft had been shot down in Russian airspace, keeping the status of its pilot Powell a mystery. Although the U.S. scrambled to deny the accusations of attempted espionage, even going so far as to claim that the aircraft was a NASA weather plane, they did not know that Powell had confessed under Soviet KGB interrogations that he had intentionally violated Soviet airspace. Along with the recovered wreckage of the U-2 plane and its incriminating photographs, the Russians had more than enough concrete evidence to expose the Eisenhower administration's cover story. Khrushchev was quick to turn the incident into anti-American propaganda, and as an additional blow to the U.S., the Russians displayed the U-2 wreckage at a public exhibition in Moscow. The timing of the U-2 debacle could not have been worse. President Eisenhower was scheduled to meet Premier Khrushchev at a critical peace summit between the U.S., Russia, Great Britain, and France in Paris in the coming days. Both sides had hoped the conference would result in a renewed dialogue and perhaps even an agreement to begin disarmament on a nuclear test ban treaty. But the fallout of the scandal put all diplomatic aspirations in jeopardy. With the outcome of the Cold War at stake, Eisenhower made the brazen decision to come clean, admitting that the espionage was a distasteful but vital necessity, inspired by a fetish of secrecy in the Soviet Union. No one wants another Pearl Harbor, he argued. When the peace conference finally convened a few weeks later, Khrushchev opened the proceedings by launching into an explicit of latent tirade and demanded that Eisenhower condemn the U-2 flights and issue a personal apology. 
Eisenhower refused, and even produced a file listing evidence of the Soviets' own espionage activities in the United States. Enraged, Khrushchev stormed out of the room and abandoned the meeting. With the collapse of the Paris summit, any chance of a thaw in the Cold War slipped away. Overall, the U-2 controversy destroyed any hopes of an effective peace conference, placing additional strain on the already fraught relationship between the world's two biggest superpowers. As a result, prolonging the threat of mutual destruction and from the perspectives of countries worldwide, all but ensuring the detrimental effects of a nuclear war.